Hey guys, everybody's been asking how we tie these bead stops on. So what I'm going to do is first go over basic, you know, there's another video out here the Steelhead Stalker guys did, and it's a great, great video. All I'm doing is going to show you with some yellow mono so you can see it a little bit better. Uh, a lot of guys have reached out to me and asked for it, so I'm going to show, show you how we do that. It's just a regular regular steelhead salmon knot, bait loop, whatever you want to call it, snail. So many wraps. It's a couple. There's a couple ways you can do this. I'll show you how how uh, we. I'm tying hooks on. You can do it a couple ways. You can leave that tab out here. Then you take your leave that tab there. Then you're going to continue to wrap. It's going to create an egg loop. Then you just hold on to that little tab there. Then you can pull it through. And cinch it up. And with a straight eye hook like this, which this is what I'm running. It's the VMCs on my website. It's a straight eye hook. And so it, it makes that hook kind of bite. It is always sitting at an angle where it wants to come in and it bites better versus a regular octopus type hook. So, you know, do your favor and find some straight eye hooks and give them a try. Um, I'll, I'll show you that little bead stop next. So basically we're taking a, this is an acrylic, pure acrylic, totally clear. And we're... It's similar to a bobber stop knot, honestly. That's what it reminded me of so much. You, you slide it down to... Ouch, man, that hook is really sharp. You know, you're you're down here towards the towards your hook, right? So what you're going to do is you got it kind of close to where you want it. Just take and loop. You're going to loop it back through the back side. And out, okay. And this in turn creates a nice little loop. Kind of see how the bead's in the middle there. So what I do is I pinch the bead in my right thumb since I'm right-handed. I'm pinching the bead in this this whole side of the loop. I'm pinching, so I can take, you know, you can pull a little bit more slack out of there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate up and drop down through, and I'm going to do that about. I don't know, probably I like eight or nine times, honestly. It just seems to really make a really good knot. So that's two. And you can always pull more through if you need to. Sometimes it's easier to drop that other hook in there. I think that's right. It's close. So, and that's what, see this bead now. You can, here's my hook. And as you pull this down, you can, you can keep that loop right here, right? And so you can slide that bead. That bead's line is basically what you did is you twisted the line in between the bead, and that's where your knot's at going to be. So what you're doing is you're working that line down. Kind of, I, I like to use push it down to where I want it. It's really not. Once you've done it for a while, you will nail this knot. It's really easy to do. It just takes a little practice. I generally wet this line before I pull it tight. So I'm about, about three finger gaps, space, then let it focus here. Then you just cinch that knot 
right there like that and it locks it in there I mean I'm 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 wrenching on that 10 pound test and that beads locked in right there you just take your your regular beads and here are all the this is a 10 mil bead so you can get reference 10 mil incognito death or a yellow jacket so that bead will sit right on there. I can't incognitos cannot slide over that stop because that hard bead in there. So that thing will fish until you lose it. Period. End of story. You know, nice little setup there, and you know it's it's going to be there until you want to redo it or tie another one. A lot of times, what this does is the the beauty about this little st bead stop like that is if you break off your hook. You're bringing your you're bringing your bead back, and you're not losing your bead. So that's great. That's amazing. Um, so next video here, I'm gonna stop this one. So hopefully, guys, that explains it for you. Um, so I'm gonna go over it one more time for you, just with a different colored bead. Trim all this off. Ouch. I'm going to use a, I'm going to use this glow in the dark four mil as reference so you can see a little bit better. And I'm going to show you another way to tie on a make it bobber knot. Oops, sorry. Wow, I'm having a difficult time here. All right. Actually, here, let me show you. I'm going to show you this. I'm all over the place. Don't worry about it. That's normal for my life. So what we're going to do is this is another way to tie a actual egg loop on a hook. Not too many guys do it this way. Wrap it around, right? You know, 10, 10 wraps or so. The more you wrap it, the more space you give yourself here to put eggs on. And it's easier to get the loop out. So what I'm going to show you here is kind of the opposite. Instead of stopping here short, put that through the back side here, just like the other way, like I showed you. You can literally pull this through, right? And then you can pinch that right there. See this loop right here? I created a loop, right? So this is a way I like to put some of my yarnies and stuff on, is I'll take them in backwards here. I'll put them in here, then I'll take and twist this over top of it and pinch the yarn in on the back side. And I'll pinch the yarn in that way. So this is like a reverse egg loop. And you're just twisting the line away from you. And as I go over top, I twist, go around the back of the hook. Then you come right back up to the top. And plus, you can also put in your yarn right here, right as you pull it tight. It's just a little way I do it. And you still got your egg loop. Just the same. So it's another way, another way to do that. Alright, so let me show you this. Drop, put your uh, I'm using this glow in the dark bead as res reference so you guys can see better. Same with the yellow line. I'd never use leader line that's yellow. I'm just doing that so you guys can see it better hopefully. All right. Yeah, that shows up really well. So, I'm going to take in I always go from the back forward. Just like that. And you can make a big loop if you want. Makes things easier. Okay, so drop it in one. See that basically straightened it out. So one, two. Ouch. Three. 
Let me start over, guys. I'm still at two there, so three. The hook is so sharp. Four. Five. Okay, so get a hold of the hook and somehow not hook yourself. Got a bunch of twists and hopefully that was on the screen. I wasn't watching the screen. Basically, I'm just working it down there, the beads in the middle, working that down there. See, I got the, the hook about right where I want it, almost three fingers gap. And you just cinch it down. And it really locks that bead in the place. Here, put focus. But it really locks that bead in. So hopefully you guys could see it. I'm going to review it make sure I did it right. Put your bead on. Big old fat 23 mil here. Oops. Mm, so, like, look at speed will actually go up in there. Just no, actually it don't. It just stops right there. Thought it might go in there a little ways, but it don't. But there you go. You're set. And that's a one size one with a 23 mil and it gives you enough gap and it, these are soft enough that they'll grab it and it'll get them so okay guys we'll, we'll see how that goes tight lines hey our website check it out if you guys are wanting to get in there and check it out website wise there it is lured by the bead.com if you're looking to get out for a guided trip there's my phone number on the back. All right, guys. Tight lines. Take care. Merry Christmas.